guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dina and I'm a Catholic wife and mother. My videos are about my vocation, being a housewife, a homeschool teacher, a mother, but it's all gonna tie back to my faith of being a Catholic woman. And I wanna share my passions and my vocation with you and in hope that I can help you in some way. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you eight ways that you can pray in Eucharistic adoration. Have you ever wondered, what is adoration? What do you do? Where do you even find it? Is it in every Catholic parish? <laughs> Eucharistic adoration is something that I've only recently fallen in love with. But I'll be honest with you, it was really hard for me. It's hard to be silent in general, but to be silent and just focused on one thing, Jesus in the Eucharist, is really difficult for a person like me. So if you're like that and you struggle with long periods of silence and not really knowing what to do, I hope this video will help you. Leave me a comment below and let me know, is adoration something that you like? Is it something that maybe you struggle with? And if it is something that you do, do you pray the rosary? Do you journal? What do you do during your time or do you just stay in prayer? I'd love to hear your comments below. So let's get started. Eight things that you can do to pray during Eucharistic adoration. One of the things I would recommend you bring is your Bible. Now you can either get, um, you can obviously get the Bible online. There's different apps that you can get, but if you're more of a tactile person like I am, I wanna have a paper version. This is the one that I've had for years. And it's the Catholic Women's Devotional Bible where it'll have like a devotional reading and it has it's all the books of the Bible, so all 73 books of the Bible. The I tabbed it with tabs that I got. I believe it's from Mark Hart. I'll figure it out and I'll put it down in the description box below if you're interested and you can get them. And it just has the different readings. Bring a highlighter, pen, write. You could do that. One of the books that my husband likes, Bible versions, is this one. It's my daily Catholic Bible. And this one is broken up by days. And you just go to the day, so April the 12th, um, you just read whatever the reading is, has a, you know, a box where you can check off. You could write the date, and I've seen date stamps you can use for that. That's also helpful. And then if you're super fancy, I would suggest Bible journaling. Now, this one is a Catholic Bible. It's from Blessed Is She, and I will link them down below. And I'm so grateful that they created this beautiful Bible. Now, it doesn't come with the tabs, but I really suggest that you get them. Um, it just makes your Bible so beautiful. And you can um, tab it, and I'll put them down in the description box below. So it has all the different Bibles, and they sell these on like um, Etsy, Amazon, but all this specific one I'll put down in the description box. And then if you don't have a reading plan for the Bible, because sometimes it's difficult to know, like do you just like open it up and just read whatever, you can follow the readings from the church. So go on to usccb.org, and it has the readings for the day. And I just follow those sometimes. So just depending on what I want to do, sometimes I'll just open my Bible to wherever and just read that. Definitely something that I would suggest. Bring your Bible with you. Another thing that you can do is bring books, spiritual books. So this one is one that my husband loves very much. He has a real devotion to St. Padre Pio. So I would suggest something like this would be helpful. You know, it has different letters and it's also again by date. So you go to April the 12th or whatever date it happens to be that you're watching this, find the passage. And these are all letters that he wrote to his, you know, people that he was advising spiritual direction over the years. Super helpful, something like this. Another one that I recommend is a Catholic Mom's Prayer Companion book. This one, again, by date, and it's just smaller. This is a Bible-based devotional. It has um, different, like a devotion that you can do, and then a prayer, something for you to ponder. And this is something that you can use in conjunction with, my next tip, is to bring a journal. So you can get a beautiful um, notebook anywhere. Target, Amazon, I got this on Amazon for probably six dollars or something and then just journal so you can write a letter to the lord whatever your prayers petitions thanksgiving you can journal however you want to do and a lot of times the devotional will give you questions to ponder write those in your journal so definitely bring a pen journal notebook that'll definitely keep you occupied another thing that i do and it's something that's been new for me 
is praying the rosary. So that is something, pardon my rosary beads, that is something that I had struggled with forever. Now it's kind of twofold because I've always struggled with Mary, so I always avoided the rosary. But it's a very Christ-centered prayer. It's all about Jesus and his life and his life with his mom. So it's something that we have been doing as a family is praying the rosary every night after dinner and I'm learning it and I am pretty confident that I could do it all by myself. So bring your rosary with you and pray whatever it happens to be for that day, whatever mysteries for that day. So, and fun fact about this rosary, this is from Italy and I got it when I was, um, our 20th anniversary was last year and we went to Italy and we went to the Vatican and that was blessed by the Pope. So that's a special rosary for us. And that was, all, you know, for our 20th anniversary and it's blessed by the Pope and it's from Italy. Another thing that you can do is, so, so far we've said, read your Bible or spiritual books, rosary, journaling. Also, you could offer a holy hour and there are indulgences attached to that and I'll link them down below so you can get more information on indulgences and how that works. But devote a whole hour to the Lord because, you know, I mean, he said it, right? You couldn't even give me an hour, you know, and that's always something that whenever I feel like, okay, I gotta go, I've been in here long enough. No, just if you can give an hour, that's amazing. Another thing you can do is ask for the intercession of saints. You know, asking a saint to pray for you doesn't have anything to do with who is giving us whatever it is we've asked for. Of course it's Christ that's doing it. But just like I can ask you to pray for me, I can ask the righteous in heaven to pray for me. They're the closest to Jesus. You know, and we're just sinful people and we ask each other to pray for one another all the time. So why not avail ourselves to the saints? Um, another thing you can, and I've seen this a lot, is you'll see in different groups, maybe on Facebook or Instagram, somebody saying, I'm going to adoration. How can I pray for you? Or maybe you keep, you know, a notebook where you'll say, you know, I'll pray for you. And just really follow through with that because it's so easy to throw that out there. Oh yeah, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you, whatever. Really mean it. If you say you're gonna pray for somebody, write it down. And when you go to adoration and you're before the Lord, offer those prayers for that person. It's a beautiful thing that we can do for one another. Another thing, and this is probably the hardest thing for me in adoration, is if I'm not occupied with the rosary, the Bible, spiritual books, praying for somebody else, it's just sitting there and just being quiet and being still in the presence of the Lord. And that for me is so difficult because I'm always ready to go, wanting to go move, whatever. And to just kind of quiet myself in my mind is a struggle, but it's something that I'm trying to do, to not always have to be occupied doing something else that I can just be. So if that's something that you might struggle with, just forget all this other stuff that I suggested and just go before the Lord in Eucharistic adoration and just be there with him and just let him kind of speak to your heart. So as for getting ready for Holy Week, I just wanted to encourage you all, if you haven't been to adoration before, contact your parish, look it up online, find an adoration chapel where you can go and just be before the Lord, especially this week when we are supposed to really be focused in on getting to Easter. And I really hope that you will use all the different resources that the church gives to us to make this a powerful and beautiful Holy Week for you and for your family. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video, that you maybe took something away from it that you can bring into your own faith life and make your adoration experience even richer. So God bless you all. I hope you have a blessed Holy Week and I will see you next week with something else. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, like this video if you liked it, and I hope you'll leave a comment below. Let me know what are things that you're doing this week for Holy Week to make it even better. Again, God bless you all. I'll see you next week. Take care.